The story of Stanley Peterson personifies the harrowing experiences of many East European emigres who escaped persecution and war, finding refuge and freedom in Canada. Stanley Peterson was born Bogdan Patek in 1921 and grew up in Polish-controlled Galicia in western Ukraine. In 1940, shortly after the Red Army invaded the region, while attempting to flee to the west, Bogdan and his cousin were caught and handed over to the NKVD. Fearing retribution by Soviet authorities, Bogdan hid his Ukrainian identity and assumed the Polish name of Stanislav Przybyszewski. But this attempt to save himself was futile, and in late October of 1940, he was sentenced to three years of forced labor and sent to the Gulag. Initially, in the Kotlas transit camp in Arhangelsk, Russia, and then, in early 1941, he was sent to one of the NKVD's most notorious labor camps in Nuchtoyzemsky in the Arctic Komi region. Here, the Gulag's food ration coupons barely kept Stanislav and his fellow Ukrainian, Polish and Jewish prisoners subsisting on a mere 100 grams of kasha and 100 grams of bread per day. After Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, and following the signing of the sikorsky maisky Agreement, which allowed for the creation of a Polish army formed on the territory of the Soviet Union, by late August of that year, like thousands of other prisoners who had been deported from Polish-held territories, Stanislav was released from the Gulag and began to make the grueling journey to join Allied forces fighting the Nazis. Making his way from Siberia through Kazakhstan and then Uzbekistan, he enlisted into General Anders' forces in March of 1942. Afflicted with typhoid and then yellow fever, Stanislav was hospitalized several times. Battling extreme weather, hunger, tuberculosis and malaria, he and his unit made their way from Turkmenia to Persia. As hundreds of his fellow soldiers died of disease and exhaustion, Stanislav fell ill again, eventually landing in a Tehran army hospital, gravely malnourished and weighing a mere 83 pounds. It was while hospitalized in Iran that Stanislav's voracious appetite for reading and gift for foreign languages emerged. While convalescing, he studied and honed his English and Farsi. After passing a language proficiency test, he was hired by the joint British-American Military Transportation Committee, overseen by Britain's War Office. Dispatched to the military supply corridor in southern Persia, he worked under harsh conditions and extreme heat. After residing in a refugee camp in the Iranian district of Ahvaz, Stanislav eventually made his way to East India in 1943 and to a transit camp in Karachi, then onward to Kenya. Like countless other East European refugees, he went on to settle in East Africa, a region with its own unique environment, beauty and dangers. Thanks to his linguistic skills, he spent six years overseeing a displaced persons camp in British-controlled Uganda. It was in this DP camp near Kampala that Stanislav met and married his wife, Christina, herself a former victim of Stalin's forced deportations to Kazakhstan. In time, he and his wife left Uganda for the port of Mombasa, Kenya, where they boarded the USS General Black as passengers on the military transport ship that would bring them to their new North American homeland, where they were to work as live-in domestics. But not long after arriving in Canada in 1949 as a refugee, Stanislav's Canadian employer insisted that he pursue his studies, and he did, becoming a successful chartered accountant. And like many immigrants at the time, to better fit into Canadian society, he changed his name to Stanley Peterson, in tribute to his father, Peter. 
Ambitious, talented, and possessing a sharp intellect, Peterson initially worked in the private sector in Toronto, later rising through the ranks of the provincial civil service, holding senior positions with the Ontario Development Corporation. Possessing a keen interest in finance and driven by discipline and unrelenting research, over the course of 60 years, Stanley Peterson would build an extensive investment portfolio, enabling him to become a passionate benefactor. Though proudly Canadian, Stanley Peterson never forgot his Ukrainian roots and the importance of freedom and human dignity. He donated millions of dollars towards democracy-building projects, the publication of works by Soviet dissident writers, and the advancement of compelling literature, earning high praise from ambassadors and even future presidents. Often insisting on anonymity, Stanley Peterson was a major benefactor of countless projects, supporting libraries, writing competitions, and the publication of books on literature, history, politics, and human rights. Proficient in five languages, including Persian, and enamored with the written word, Stanley Peterson was a prolific amateur writer who penned several novels and countless poems, believing that one day he would write the great Canadian novel. Driven by his love of books and belief in the rule of law, thanks to his long-time partnership with Canadian Friends of Ukraine, in 1998, Peterson provided major seed money for the establishment of the Canada-Ukraine Parliamentary Resource Center at the National Parliamentary Library in Kiev, which subsequently evolved into an international development project supported by the Canadian government. Indeed, for decades and without fanfare, Stanley Peterson emerged as one of the Ukrainian-Canadian community's most committed benefactors, donating a half million dollars annually to projects and organizations too long to list to capture the extent of his generosity. In 2013, in recognition of his outstanding philanthropy, Stanley Peterson was named recipient of Ukraine's International Mykola Hohol Triumph Award. Today, we not only honor the life journey of an exceptional man, but we also celebrate the realization of one man's dream to create a Canadian literary fund with Ukrainian roots and a global reach. Inspired by pride in his ancestral homeland, a passion for freedom, and a lifelong love for books, the literary fund that Stanley Peterson created will not only benefit current and future generations of writers, translators, and publishers, but it will also serve as a lasting testament to this remarkable man's humanity, generosity, and far-sighted vision.